Today's video is sponsored by Bombfell. Welcome to r slash I don't work here lady where an entitled Karen calls the cops and gets herself a ticket. I have a highly specific job that usually sends me to construction sites where I, well, somebody not knowing what I do would say, I just watch the digger load trucks. Of course, it's more complicated than this, but it's not important for the story. My company is usually hired by the owner of the site, not the company which is actually building there. Because of this, I only have to work with the workers there, but I'm not required to do something else. So on to the story. I was sent to a construction site in the city with very few parking spaces around. Because of this, the company building there had to deal with the city to declare space alongside the road usually used for parking into a no parking zone, so that they could store some of their stuff there and had set up signs to make this clear. It was summer at the time, and pretty hot. The operator of the digger and I were the only people on site through lunchtime when some lady shouted to me to come to the entrance of the construction site. I'd set myself in pretty much the only piece of shadow on the whole site and wasn't really in the mood to leave that spot. So I shouted back to her to tell me what she wants. Turns out she had parked in the no parking zone and hadn't noticed that the workers had set up a movable fence to surround the zone to be able to store their tools there without getting it stolen right away. So her car, a Porsche, was almost boxed in as two thirds of her car were in the no parking zone. She's still shouting at me, so after seeing what's going on, I get interested and move on. I get to her covered in dust, taking my time moving up to her. She was in her 40s maybe and wore high heels and a nice dress. Typical businesswoman. The whole time she was shouting at me to speed up and move faster. She's in a hurry. So finally I'm in front of her. Finally, that took you ages. Now move that dang fence so I can pull out of here. Why would you even box me in? I turn around slowly and look at her car. It would have been easy for me even for herself, to move the fence and let her out, but she wasn't very nice and I wasn't obliged to help her. Sorry, won't do that. What? Why would you say that? Let me out! I don't work here. I said that, standing in front of the construction, covered in dust, wearing my high visibility vest and my hard hat. Left her speechless for a moment. Then all hell broke loose. I was lying, she would get me fired, she would call the police because this was theft, she knew the mayor, and all kinds of other things. I just stood there, pretty amused on the inside, just like the operator in his digger who was laughing so loud I almost could hear him over her screeching. While it was amusing seeing her go off at this point, I was a bit pissed too. Because I could only imagine how this entitled brat was speaking to people she actually had power over. While she was in her tirade, two policemen turned the corner. She must have noticed the grin on my face because she abruptly turned around and saw the two approaching her car. Finally, someone who can help me. Tell this douchebag to move the fence so I can pull out. The two policemen looked at her and then at her car. Finally, at me. One of them walked to the vehicle and the other approached me. What's going on here? She ordered me to let her out of the no parking zone, but I don't work for this building. I pointed to the big signs where the well-known building company advertised itself into my name tag. I wear one on my high visibility vest with my company's name on it. The policeman understood very fast. These no parking zones are pretty common in the city. He walked over to his colleague who was the target of the woman now and said a few words to him. He pulled out a small book and began writing a ticket. Only then did it dawn on the lady that she was in trouble. She still kept shouting that she did nothing wrong because she was boxed in and wouldn't be in the no parking zone if only I would let her pull away. He doesn't work here and you're parking in a no parking zone. Here's your ticket. He handed her the ticket and moved the fence to let her pull out. She was standing there a few seconds with a ticket in hand, speechless. Then she got in her car giving me the stink eye and drove off. I tipped my hard hat when the two policemen continued their walk and went back to tell the digger operator what happened. Had a good laugh after all. Our next reddit post is from HGA2001. This happened maybe an hour or so ago to my friend Topher and he gave me permission to post it here because we both found it so funny. Topher, who isn't deaf, is fluent in American Sign Language thanks to his job and his degree. To practice and because he likes the people there, he volunteers at a local deaf community center three times a week. Today was a regular volunteering day and he was asked to check and see if the local Wally World had party supplies for a surprise birthday party they were planning for another volunteer. Topher agreed and off to the local Wally World he went. 
As he didn't have anything clean to wear, he was wearing a blue polo shirt and a nice pair of khakis, which also happened to be the same colored uniform most of the workers at Wally World wear. Topher was heading to the party supply section when he heard the classic war call of the Wild Karen. Ahem. Topher turned around and saw a classic Karen. Short Captain Marvel haircut, leopard print leggings, a too tight black shirt, and a face that looked like she had smelled a fresh turd. Because he had spent all day using ASL, Topher was on what he liked to call sign language brain, where he'll sign on reflex. He signed, do you sign to her? Upon seeing him sign, she grimaced before shouting in a slow voice, I need help. Do you understand? Topher was about ready to tell her that he could hear her and to screw off, but he decided to have a little bit of fun at her expense. He held up his hand as if to ask her to wait, took out his smartphone, put it to the notepad app and typed, type here what you need and I'll help you find it. This humble response would make any normal person realize their bad manners and apologize profusely. But then again, I think everyone who's read or experienced an I Don't Work Here Lady story knows Karen's lack this ability. So for the next 20 minutes, Karen ordered Topher around. She had him grabbing stuff, only to put it away when it was squashed or bent or dinged, etc. Going to various aisles to get various things, wait outside for her at the changing room, the works. Topher was thinking about the best way to let the cat out of the bag when Karen got a phone call from her friend Wendy. Topher turned his back so that he could hide that he could hear. Hey, Wendy. Yeah, I'm fine. Just a deaf kid helping me out. Yeah, they hire deaf people here. Can you believe it? No wonder service here has gone to the pits. They should stick with their own kind if talking is going to be a problem. Topher was pissed at this point. Because he's worked with the deaf community for so long, he gets really angry whenever he hears them getting treated badly. But calmer senses prevailed, and he prepared his shut up Hannibal speech. Finally, after 20 minutes, Karen announced that she was done and ready to check out. Topher walked her to a register that just opened and turned to her. Please tell your friend Wendy that I said hello. The look on Karen's face when she realized what had happened was priceless. Our next Reddit post is from Spaceman Charisma. Backstory. In the winter of 2017, my family went on a huge road trip from where we lived in Northern California all the way to Arizona and Nevada. We spent five days in Arizona and Christmas in a hotel overlooking the Grand Canyon and then we were off to Nevada, where we were going to spend just a few nights to celebrate my dad's birthday and see a David Copperfield show. We ate dinner at an adjoining restaurant called the Wolfgang Puck and then my parents left my sister and I, 14 and 16 at the time, to go to their hotel room alone so long as we got them some dessert and were back to our room within the hour. We got black forest chocolate cake and some Roman raisin ice cream and headed back upstairs along with the leftover food from dinner. When we reached the 8th floor, we stepped out and began walking to our room, down the hall and to the right. Just as we turned the corner, a door to our left opened. An irate looking woman stepped out, tapping her foot impatiently and staring expectantly at us. Finally, it shouldn't take you over an hour to deliver some gosh darn cake. Um, what are you? She grabs for the food I'm carrying, the dessert. My sister had the leftovers. Give those here. I'm a paying customer. I won't stand for you mouthing off like that. Hey, what are you doing? That's my food. I jerk back. My sister is already several feet back, looking amused, but also worried. Probably about the cake, not me. Listen, I don't want to hear your excuses. Another word out of either of you and I'll have you reported. What the ever-loving flip are you on about? We are effing guests at the hotel and you better say the F back. The waiter comes around the corner. In front of him is a huge cart that's literally piled with food. Hello? I heard yelling. Is something wrong? Your stupid employees not only came an hour late with my food, but they're now being argumentative and are refusing to give me the food. Are you in charge around here? Maybe you can talk some sense into them. The waiter turns to me. Young man is what she's saying. He stops mid-sentence, realizing that he's talking to a 5'3 teen whose voice hasn't even cracked yet. Ma'am, I don't know who you think these people are, but they aren't waiters. They have food, yes, but that's from Wolfgang Puck, as you can see from the box logo. And it's not even where you order the food from. She tries to interrupt, but he cuts her off. I know, because I have your food right here. The crazy lady goes pretty red and shuts up right away. 
After that, the waiter told us to wait a bit further down the hall and finished up giving the lady her dessert. Then he came back to us. He escorted us to our rooms and for the most part, that was the end of that. We did get some free breakfast cards delivered to our door early the next morning, but we were leaving for a lunch engagement on our drive home and there wasn't time to use them. Our next Reddit post is from Wanders the Galaxy. So I work at a rent to own furniture store right down the road from a Walmart. So come payday, I usually go straight to Walmart after clicking out. Our uniforms are made up of black pants or jeans and various blue shirts. However, our shirts have the company logo embroidered on the top left near the collar. I've been mistaken for an employee a few times, but most people just laugh it off when I tell them I don't work for Walmart. Yesterday though, this Karen wasn't having it. Last night, I was finishing up some last minute Christmas slash grocery shopping. I hung around in the electronics section for a little while waiting for an employee to come help me as I've been interested in getting a new phone. But it's the holiday season and they were absolutely swamped. No big deal. I go to push my cart, filled with a few presents and groceries, and I honestly just want to get out of there because the customer traffic is getting to be a little too much for me. Thanks to my crippling social anxiety, I don't do crowds. I'm trying to gently push past this woman, but her and her cart are right in the middle of the aisle, taking up as much space as she possibly could, and I barely ding the corner of it. Excuse you? She says, reeling back and regaining her balance as if I hit her with a brick. Oh, uh, sorry, I mumble. I try to push past her again. I've been waiting here forever. She'd been waiting there maybe a minute. She certainly hadn't been there when I got there just a few minutes before. There's a video game I need you to get for me. In case you don't know, Walmart keeps all their video games in locked glass cabinets. And you need an employee to unlock it for you so they can grab the video game and immediately bring you over to check out. The same for controllers, consoles, and accessories. I point to the logo on my shirt. I actually don't work here. I work at another company. The Karen sighed and tapped her foot. I don't care if you're on break or whatever. Just get me the video game. I can't. I don't work here. You'll have to get an employee. You are an employee, Karen says, getting louder. No, I'm a customer, shopping, just like you. I'll be going now. I try, once again, to push past her. I know the manager of this store, and they won't be happy to hear that their employee is being rather disobedient. This woman rammed her cart into mine to stop me from walking beside her. Instead, I try to turn around and leave that way. She's not having it. I demand to speak to your manager. I'm on the verge of crying at this point. I just want out of the situation. My manager is at home, and I don't work here. I just want to check out and go home. This is what sets her off, and when the screaming begins. I just want the video game for my son. It's for Christmas. Why do you want to ruin Christmas for me and my family? I'm sobbing now. I can't handle people raising their voice at me. I don't work here, I cry at her. Yes, you do. Get me the video game. One of the employees in electronics finally gets through the line of people they were checking out and came over to investigate. He looks at me, sobbing like a child, and then to Karen and his shoulders slump, like he knows what's going down. What seems to be the problem here, he asked me. I try my best to explain that this crazy woman is screaming at me and somehow thinks I'm an employee, but I'm blubbering and I can't get too many words out, so Karen takes it upon herself to tell the employee what happened. Your coworker here is being extremely rude. She's been cursing at me and slammed her card into mine several times to get me to move. I asked her to get a video game for me, but she told me to F off. No, I yell, but that's really all I can manage to choke out. The employee looks down at my shirt and sighs. Ma'am, this young lady doesn't work here. She's an employee at another company. Karen puts her hands on her hips and rolls her eyes so hard, I thought they might roll right out of their sockets. I just need someone to get me the video game for Christ's sake. The employee leans on my shopping cart. We're pretty busy over here. I don't know if you're aware, but Christmas is in just two days. I'm sorry we were unable to get to you in a timely manner, but being impatient isn't an excuse to verbally abuse another customer just because their shirts happen to be blue. You people are insufferable. I'll have you know that I'm friends with the manager and he'll be hearing about this. I'll be taking my business to GameStop. She starts to walk away, and I think that's the end of it, but no. For her finale, Karen pushes her cart over, sending everything that was in it skidding and sliding across the floor. 
She stormed off, like Karens do, but not before the employee could wish her a happy holiday. I thanked the employee as soon as I could get the tears to stop flowing, and I checked out as fast as I could. The lesson I learned, not to go to Walmart under any circumstances during the holidays. Well, of course she knows the manager. When you call the manager every single time you go into a business, then eventually you get to know quite a few managers. I hate shopping for clothes. Not only is it pure torture, but on top of that, I don't have a clue what's fashionable nowadays. That's why I like to use personal stylist services like Bombfell. It's pretty easy. Basically, you take an online style quiz, you preview the stylist's picks before they ship, and then you try it on at home. And if you don't like it, you just send it back and get your money back. But if you find something you like, you just keep it. And best of all, you get 20% off of every order when you keep the entire order. So go ahead and check it out. Go to bombfell.com slash slash. <laughs> That's the symbol slash followed by the word slash for $25 off off your first order. That's B-O-M-B-F-E-L-L dot com, the symbol slash, and then the word slash. That was r slash I don't work here lady, and if you like this content, then be sure to hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit content every single day.